Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing why moving on attracts an ex. How to become irresistible. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing why moving on attracts an ex. How to become irresistible. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you may have heard people say that you need to move on to attract an ex. In today's podcast, I'll be giving three points to consider why I believe it's not enough to just move on when trying to get an ex back. And on top of this, you need to become irresistible to your dumper. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is moving on is just the start. So first of all, I just want to clarify the terminology. Lots of people say move on. Moving on attracts an ex. I don't like the term moving on. When I believe in trying to attract an ex, increasing the chance of getting your ex back, I strongly believe that you should be moving forward rather than moving on. And the difference may be subtle, but it is a difference. I believe that when you move on, you close the door. You know, maybe that means you block your ex, for instance. I believe instead you should move forward. Moving forward, in my opinion, means that you focus on your own life. You focus on your own journey. You make new connections. You go through self-improvement, but you leave the door open. And there is the subtle difference. So I've used the terminology today, moving on, because it is more commonplace I would suggest more people are going to be thinking about whether moving on attracts an ex rather than moving forward. And that's why I'm going to be using moving on within this title. However, my terminology definition is I believe you need to be moving forward. Now, irrespective of whether you want to say move forward or moving on, this is just the start. Now, whatever you want to refer to this as, you know, if you want to try to increase the chance of getting your ex back... You can't just be moving on, moving forward from this point, from this perspective and thinking that my ex is going to come back to me based upon this. Now, I don't think that is enough. Maybe in a very small amount of instances, this could be something which triggers and regrows romantic emotional attraction to the high point of where a dumper will want to reconsider their decision. But by and large, There needs to be more than this. And that's why through today's podcast, I'm going to be explaining, in my opinion, how you can become irresistible to your ex. And this is going to be to the different perspectives that you might be in regards to your ex. Now, I believe in masculine and feminine energy. Now, this doesn't necessarily connect to a man or a woman. However, generally speaking, most men are in their masculine and generally speaking, most women are in their feminine. Now, this doesn't mean definitively that your ex will connect with this. It doesn't mean definitively that you connect with this. But what I'm going to be speaking about through today's podcast is going to be generalized to this point. When I speak about masculinity, I'm going to be referring to, in general terms, men. And when I speak about femininity, I'm going to be speaking in general terms, women. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean it connects in your instance. And this is why I always say to people, if you want more specialized advice, if you want more specialized support, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service, where me and you can speak one-on-one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website, www.dateme.tips, for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate 
via my audio coaching service because my podcasts, including today, have to be somewhat generalized. You know, I'm speaking to people from a wide range of ages, you know, 18 to in their 70s. I'm speaking to both men and women. I'm speaking to both heterosexual and homosexual people. So when you consider that I'm having to be generalized here, this is never going to be precisely your situation. And that's why my audio coaching could be of help. But like I've been saying in point number one, moving on, moving forward, it's just the start. Okay, if you implement my version of a no contact rule and move forward with your life, that is going to regrow romantic emotional attraction in your ex's mind. But is it enough? You know, I would say most of the time you need to be adding these extra elements I'm going to be speaking about further today about how you can become irresistible to your ex. And this is going to be based on my own research. Okay, this is my own personal research. It may not match other research that you've read about, heard about, maybe even conducted yourself. This is my research and I'm going to be speaking about what you can do to increase the chance of getting your ex back, whether your ex is in their feminine, i.e. generally speaking that would be a woman, or whether your ex is in their masculine, generally speaking that would be a man. Because it is somewhat different what you can do to, in general terms, become irresistible. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast about why moving on attracts an ex, how to become irresistible. And point number two is if your ex is in their masculine. So like I've just said, when I'm saying if your ex is in their masculine, then generally speaking, I'm speaking about if your ex is a man. That's the general sense of today's podcast. It might not match your situation. And this is why my audio coaching could be helpful and more specific. If you believe that your ex is in their feminine, generally speaking, that would be a woman, then please keep listening because I'll be getting to this point very shortly. But first of all, we are going to be speaking about if your ex is in their masculine. That means if your ex is likely to be a man, mainly this will be a man. And after speaking with hundreds of men, I can say without doubt that the number one trait that most men look for initially in a partner is physical attraction. Now, if you're listening to this, maybe you're a woman and you're thinking, okay, my ex is a man. I want to try and increase the chance of getting him back. Then you need to be listening to this advice very, very carefully. You know, a huge majority of men have told me this. They've told me that physical attraction is the number one trait they look for initially. And hence, it's important to recognize that when trying to get an ex back who is in their masculine, you must first focus on your health and your fitness. Because the byproduct of better health, increased fitness, is going to be better increased physical attraction. If you treat yourself the right way, if you look after yourself, if you live a healthy life by eating healthy, regular exercise, getting enough sleep, removing bad substances, these things are naturally going to be making you more attractive. And this is a crucial, important step. Now, of course, looking your best is not just the only way to try and get somebody back who's in their masculine. But without doubt, it is a huge, huge, huge important element. You know, from my research, I would say more than 90% of men told me that this is something that they look for, number one. So what this means, generally speaking, is that if a man is wanting to try to reconnect with a woman, then he must find her physically attractive. Because if he doesn't, he's probably not even going to be looking at the other elements. Now, if you're listening to this as a woman, you might be thinking, well, this sounds really superficial. And I'm not here to say that that's not something that might not go through your mind. But this is the reality. This is the situation. This is hundreds of men telling me their thoughts. So we need to listen to what they're saying. Because you can't get your ex back unless they feel a high level of romantic emotional attraction. And when it comes to men, generally speaking, they're going to be first making sure that they feel physically attracted to a woman in this regard. Does it mean that other things aren't important? No, of course not. Other things are hugely important. But you must get the baseline first. And this is where the physical attraction can be increased by making sure you live your life the right way. Making sure your health and your fitness are in optimum condition. You know, look after yourself. Treat yourself. Make sure you are somebody who is putting yourself first during this time. 
And in my opinion, if you do this, that provides you with a baseline to move forward with your reconnection techniques. Yes, there are other things. You know, and one of the other elements I think I should mention about if your ex is masculine is the importance of supporting them as they move forward with their mission. You know, most people within their masculine will have a mission, will have a huge goal. That's not to say that people in their feminine don't as well. But again, it's something that really ranked highly. And when men told me what they're looking for in a partner is that they say that they want somebody to be supportive of them on their journey, whether or not this is a work goal, whether this is something that they want to achieve socially, this could vary, of course. But it's important just to recognise that if you want to attract somebody in their masculine, the number one trait to focus on initially is making sure your health and fitness are on point, and therefore the physical attraction is likely to be at its highest. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about why moving on attracts an ex, how to become irresistible. And point number three is if your ex is a male feminine. So if your ex is a male feminine, this means that they are most likely to be a woman. And after speaking to hundreds of women, I can say without doubt that the number one trait that women are telling me that they look for in a partner is ambition. Now, this is an interesting one, because sometimes you will get men who are quite bitter, who say things like, women are only interested in money. You know, I completely think that is untrue. That is ridiculous. That is unfair. That is not kind. That is not sensible thinking. It's faulty thinking. But I think where the confusion can come from is because most women have told me the number one trait they look for in a partner is ambition. Now think about it, if you have increased ambition, what is likely to eventually come to you? You know, if you are an ambitious person, then eventually you are likely to achieve higher goals. You are likely to move up the ladder in your job, in your work, whether you're self-employed, whatever it may be. If you're ambitious, you're more likely to achieve. And if you achieve, then that might mean that you start to earn more money. So do women only look for people with money. No, that is not true. But without doubt, they look for somebody with ambition. And the byproduct of ambition is often increased wealth. Now, there are other things, of course, as well. And if your ex is a feminine, you want to try and reattract them. It's not just about trying to be ambitious, although that is very crucial. Being confident and stable also ranked very highly in what women told me they look for in a partner. So if you are somebody who's trying to get your ex back and your ex is a feminine, generally speaking, a woman, then you need to be making sure that you are confident and stable. You need to be making sure that you're not needy. You need to be making sure that you're focused on your own journey, on your own path. You need to be making sure that you believe in yourself. Not crossing the line. You know, it's not attractive if you are arrogant. You need to be making sure that you stay the right side of the line. You're confident, you're stable, but you're not arrogant. You need to be making sure that you live your life the right way. Now, even though when women have told me what they look for in a partner, they never said in the top two or three things, physical attraction, that doesn't mean, guys, that you can let yourself go. Absolutely not. Again, you need to be focusing on the things that I said earlier on, which could really help women, generally speaking, who are in their feminine, trying to reattract somebody in their masculine. You need to be making sure that your health and fitness are still on point, even though it doesn't rank as highly that when women told me what they're looking for in a partner. So please don't think you can exclude that because that is not going to help you at all. But when we consider why moving on attracts an ex, why moving forward attracts an ex, it's not just about walking forward and leaving your ex to start missing you. You need to improve. You need to become a version 2.0 of yourself. You need that if and when your ex finds out about what you're up to in your life, maybe they see a photo, maybe they read what you're doing on social media, maybe they hear from a friend of a friend, maybe they bump into you, maybe they reach out to you because they're missing you via my version of a no contact rule. Whatever it is, when they find out about you right now, they need to think, wow, they need to be amazed, they need to be impressed. And this is why moving on is not enough. You need to become irresistible. If you're trying to attract somebody 
who isn't a masculine. You need to be making sure that they find you physically attractive. You know, at the very, very least, that needs to be the beginning and the starting point because it's so important to people in their masculine. If you are trying to attract an ex who isn't a feminine, make sure you have a goal. Make sure you are living your life in a way where you're ambitious, confident and stable. It's so important for people in their feminine to be attracted and see that within a potential partner, whether it's an ex or somebody new. Now, it's important for me to say that even though I've separated these things today, it doesn't mean that if you're on the other side of the spectrum, that you shouldn't be trying to do these things as well, because they're all good elements. They're all good pieces of advice to follow. It's just that people in their feminine and people in their masculine often see things slightly different about what ranks as more important. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing everything to improve yourself. It just means that the starting points might need to be slightly realigned depending on where you're at. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.